So we, uh, Palm Sunday is, is this really unique uh, d- time in our season of Lent. Uh, we've been uh, on this journey uh, with Jesus to really reflect and discern our own spiritual state of being. Uh, as Episcopalians and within many other denominations, this is our time to really get into the gritty part of, yes, we believe in the restoration, we believe in renewal, we believe in joy, but, but Lent is a time for us to really look in the mirror and examine our own weaknesses. A time for us to examine our own faults, examine of how we fall short of the glory of God, which in truth is every day, and for us to know that we are always restored and renewed through Christ. But this is a time, and many of our other Abrahamic brothers from all the other big religions have the same idea. The Jews have Yom Kippur, uh, Muslims have Ramadan, and we all come from this branch of Abraham. Abraham being the father that God put his hands on and said, hey, you go out and spread this, this, this God family. Um, and obviously as Christians, we come down from the Jewish side, and, but we all have this season of... The, whether it's Yom Kippur, Ramadan, or Lent, of, to be in the desert and to really examine. So hopefully, I want to ask you, how has your Lent been going? Anyone take on any disciplines? Cool. How are those disciplines going? You still got one final week. If you haven't taken on a discipline, if you haven't taken on a reflection, even if you haven't taken on a discipline, I would say journal every day if you can. This is the time, Lent, for us to be in the desert, for us to be sitting there and wondering, where am I at with God? Because now, we just came from this, this is this odd time right now, is that we come from this triumphant entry into Jerusalem, where Jesus is walking into Jerusalem, and because now up to this point, Jesus has always been dodging this moment. Because if he knows, once he goes into Jerusalem, it's curtains. So whenever anyone, he heals someone and says, hey, you're healed, does he say, hey, go tell everyone that Jesus did this? Does he, t- does he do that? No. He's like, just go in the temple, follow the ritual, just, just don't, don't say it was me. Because if he knows, if, if word keeps on getting around that it's Jesus, it's over. But here is this day, this day, Palm Sunday, where he says, okay, been three years into the ministry. It's about time for me to go in. And he gathers and calls upon, and God provides this cult for him to go into, and he doesn't just sneak into Jerusalem, <laughs> like he's been doing normally. Sneak, and then in the Gospel of John, he actually goes into Jerusalem more than the other Gospels, and he kind of sneaks in, does something, and then sneaks back out. Here, he is making an entrance. He is making an entrance on a what? What is he entering on? Like on a donkey. Now, to us, it might be like, well, okay, that's just a sign of humility. Yes, it is. But that's not, un- that's not um, unusual. When a king would come in on a donkey, that was a sign of peace. So we read outside from Matthew, and Matthew quotes Zechariah. And in Zechariah, that they're referring to, when a king would come in, he would come in a donkey. But even Zechariah, the Old Testament prophet, is saying, you will have your Messiah coming in when he comes in on a donkey. Not a horse. A king usually comes in on a big battle horse. So this community of Romans would be aware of this situation because they're aware of Caesar coming in after conquering Gaul. So Caesar conquers Gaul. He comes in for a three-day parade. Big horses coming in. Big trails of like prisoners that they got. All the booty that they got from all the treasures. At least I said booty. Booty means treasure. Okay. And so bringing it in. So don't say, I can't believe your priest said that in church. It means treasure before it got all weird with Beastie Boys. Okay. So bringing it in and bringing it in into to show off. We're victorious. Rome. We conquered Gaul. Three days of that. Everyone's cheering, throwing down palms, throwing down branches. So Jesus, this back alley preacher, rabbi from the boonies out in Nazareth, he comes in with a donkey, so he's not claiming sort of like this army-like victory. He's claiming this victory through humility, through peace. And he comes humbly walking in, and all the people start going crazy. He's got his fan base. And they start treating him like he's Caesar. Guys, this is risky stuff. He is naming his death day that day by doing that. You do not walk into Rome and start claiming that you are the king. The people start shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they shout back, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That is basically slapping Caesar across the face. 
the emperor. No, you're not the king. He is. This, this guy in a donkey is. So this is Palm Sunday. It's victorious. We felt it outside, even though that we got lost on the 85 verses we had to you know, sing over and over again. But still, we're walking around downtown Stewart waving these palms. I saw people in the hospital being like, man, those Christians are so weird. <laughs> but cool. All right, I'll make me feel better when I go back in the hospital. So that's cool. So we had a, a missional moment there. But then we get in here, and then we just go, and we hear this passion. We hear this passion of what, what eventually happens. Well, for coming in and being bold about this, this, this new way of life, this new kingdom of life, which stands for humility, which stands for compassion, which stands for love, selflessness, is going to lead to your death. And the same people who were chanting Hosanna in the highest are now chanting crucify. So that is why as a church, we, after today, you know, we see this procession coming in. We don't process out. We don't process out with the smoke because all that pomp and circumstance is over. Now we go into Holy Week. This is the holiest of weeks for us as a church. This is a time of solemnity, deep reflection, darkness, because we know where this is leading to. We're going into Jerusalem. We're going into the chaos. In 2017, it's the same thing, this hotbed of political, of even economic, but most importantly, religious, this religious hotbed that if you go in, and if you've ever been to the Holy Land, you know what it's like. Everyone's standing around with a match. It's like they're all standing in gasoline saying, I'll drop the match first. I'll drop the match first. Has anyone ever been to the Holy Land? Same way, right now. It's like, okay, you value this really well. I value this, and you value that. Okay, who's going to drop the match? You're not going to drop the match? Okay, all right? So Jesus walks into this hotbed of chaos and he brings this kingdom of love and of peace into it and he knows he is the true sacrificial lamb. In order for his kingdom to survive, he can't look back, he can't get scared, he can't turn away. He's going in and he's going to die. So what do we do with that? What do you want to die this Holy Week? We all enter into Jerusalem. What is your Jerusalem right now? What is your path of, what do you need to let go of? What's that chaotic place in your own heart that is really distancing yourself from your brothers and sisters, from this community, from this world? I'm not even talking about sin. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a pain. Maybe it's guilt. Maybe it's selfishness. Maybe it's just too much stuff that you got in your life. Because what we've been known so far on this biblical journey with God is that nothing good happens without sacrifice. There always has to be an offering of ourselves, an offering that we give up. Because when we offer ourselves and we bring it to this thing that seems like so bad, the sacrifice which is so bad, it's not called joyful sacrifice, joyful giving. It leads to new life. So as we walk into Jerusalem this holy week, what are you offering up from your own heart? I you know we had those cardboard testimonies a couple weeks ago. And I opened it up a little bit about my own story of not feeling, feeling unlovable and having to sacrifice, offer that up to God. Let that die in order for me to accept God's truth, which is that I'm lovable that I am possible of achieving great love and being a husband. And it wasn't until that point where I was able to look into my Jerusalem and look at my demons and look at the reason to all these negative thoughts I had about my own self that I was unlovable that led to a bunch of short-term relationships that had led to me just not really being a real good boyfriend. It wasn't until I looked in my Jerusalem, looked at that chaos and had my best friend tell me, Christian, you got to face the music and deal with this. I don't know if it's your parents' divorce. I don't know what it is. You got to deal with it. And it wasn't until I had the courage or maybe I just say, I would hit rock bottom to just say, God, come in and heal me and let me accept your truth, which is that I am loved. And because you created me, I am fully capable of a loving relationship. And it wasn't until that point when I faced the music, faced my Jerusalem, walked down that road, got a therapist to help me, walked down that road, shed my tears, grieved, grieved the loss, let that part of me die upon the cross. There is a death. Let it go that I could raise up and be a new life and say, Okay, God, I'm loved. I'm capable of healthy love. 
That wasn't until, I mean, I never would have met Anastasia if I would have had that, that, that moment, that time, that season. But it's dark. And it's not easy. But once we have that moment of accepting our path into Jerusalem, to the cross, we know from Abraham, from him offering up Isaac, we know from Samuel, when he offers up sacrifices before he goes into war for victory, we know that from the cross, when we offer up ourselves for sacrifice, when we offer it up to God, that sacrificial giving, give over the pain, give over the darkness, give over the loss, give over the party who says you're not good enough, you're never going to be good, you're never going to be a good father, you're never going to be a good uh, friend, you're never going to be a good human being. You've got to get rid of that. That part of you has got to die because that is a sin. Because God doesn't make junk, and God made you all, and God knows every hair on your head, and God loves you more than you could ever ask or imagine, and it is a hard part of us as human beings, as his children, to accept that and say, I am whole, I am full, God loves me more than anything. Why can't I accept that? Don't worry, everyone has that problem, but as Christians, you have a Savior who says, I'm going to hold your hand and walk with you to the cross, and we're going to bury that. This is our time during Holy Week for us to just sit in that darkness and put it at the cross. We, as a church, are at a time right now, too, because it is Commitment Sunday. We're committing ourselves to St. Mary's to say, we believe that we are building the kingdom here. We believe in these moments of resurrection. We believe that during funerals that we hold hands with our brothers and sisters and say, I'm with you to, to, to heal you, to be with you. We believe that we go to hospitals to hold one another's hands and say, I comfort you when you're battling with cancer. We believe that we are going to go and have seven now baptisms by full immersion on Easter morning that we are attracting and celebrating the new life of Christ. We believe that we have ministry starting every single day. I have people just tell me that they want to start a new uh, uh, Bible study, a new life group that's going to start. We got couples over there saying, let's, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's grow closer to Jesus. We believe as a community we are in the kingdom of God and revealing the kingdom of God. So let's build it. And it's going to take some trust because this is the day, I don't know if you all got those little pledge cards, that we're going to offer up our resources. All right? And this is not just about money. I don't care about the money. Money's going to come. As long as we stay with Jesus, the money's going to come. But what we need to do is also offer our time and our gifts. Like the couple that just reached out to me and said, Christian, we want to start a life group where we can start to do Bible study. So we got these cards, and you guys probably got them in the mail because this is Commitment Sunday. They're doing this across the street. where We're pledging what we want to offer to build this together. I'm doing the same thing. I got to have difficult conversations with Anastasia. We're getting married. We got a honeymoon. We got other things. We got willing children. We got to put financial goals for that to say what we're going to do to believe and trust that God and this joyful sacrifice, this joyful giving, is going to build something bigger. So on this card, there's a third card on here. That's a discernment card. If you are not ready to put down what you want to offer, put your fear down. What do you want to offer up to God? What is you want to put on the cross this week? Say, I'm fearful. I got college educations to pay for. I'm fearful I don't have enough time, Christian. I'm fearful I am not good enough with my gifts. We are going to offer that up today. Again, this is not about your money. Focus on the third card, which is what God are you asking me to do? So if you look through these envelopes, there's three of them. One of them is the capital campaign. One of them is the pledge. But the third one, if that's where you're at right now, focus on that third one, which is blank. Write down your fears. Write down your concerns. Write down a number. Write down a, a, a ministry you want to be a part of. Christian, I think that we need to do a better job at East Stewart to tutoring the children. Great, put it down. I think we need tutoring here. That means you're going to help lead it. The more you step into leadership, the more you give your time and your talents, the more you grow closer and reveal the kingdom of God. But that takes trust. Lots of trust. So, this is our altar. We come to this altar when we place our lives here in front of Jesus and say, Jesus, heal me, restore me, renew me. And during this time, to come up to the altar, you can feel free to do this. I want participation in this. Come up and place it on the altar. Place your concerns. Place your dreams. Place your vision for this church. Christian, next year I want to see 20 baptisms. <laughs> what is God saying in you? But we only can know that as a kingdom. 
come up. This is Commitment Sunday. It's not just about commitment, about your money. Yes, the money will help develop this kingdom work we're doing. But it's about the people. Place that commitment down here at the altar. The place one of mine. We got a beautiful ministry here called the Stephen Ministry. My hope and my prayer is that it grows. This beautiful ministry of healing. You guys are probably wondering, I don't even know what Stephen Ministry is. See, that's good. I'm gonna put this down. As my offer is your pastor to help support it, help grow up, help to wait to lead up new leaders for it on this Commitment Sunday. I'll place it on the altar. So if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you already have your cards filled out from you knew that today was Commitment Sunday, come up and this is what we offer. Across the street, they're putting in a little basket. I thought we could be a little more bold over here. Place it up on the altar. Let's pray, and if you're comfortable, uh, we're going to say a blessing over our offerings of time and of talent and of our resources. And if you're uh, comfortable enough, extend a hand. Dear Lord, thank you, God. You see at your altar, <clears throat> these are our offerings to you, God. You ask us to sacrifice, to give ourselves, to give our, of our mind and our body and our souls and our resources. And Lord, that we continue to trust in you, that you're the one who gives us every gift that you're the one that gives us all of our time and all of our energy, and you're the one who gives us all of our resources. Help us to share and give to build the church and the kingdom that you want in a broken world. That St. Mary's be a place of healing and of love and of hope and of joy. And we offer to you, Lord, all of our fears and our concerns. Help us during this Holy Week for us to bring that, bring that to the tomb and leave it in the tomb and so we walk out of the tomb with Jesus, not stuck in the empty tomb, but to walk out of the tomb with Jesus into a resurrected life. Amen. Amen.